So, so now let's go out. This, once again, this is Rock the Bells Radio, LL Cool J, my man DJ Z Trip, the influence of hip hop. Uh, we're here with my man Marshall Mathers. Eminem is in the building, and um, so now let's talk about this one. That that that. Okay, so you're a rapper. You, you you've been writing. You've been listening to Run DMC. Now there's the there's that moment when you start striving. Like for me, I was 14 when I made the decision that I want to make a record. Yeah. And when I was 16, we ended up starting Def Jam. Yeah. Um, or at least Def Jam the label, because right. T. La Rock was the production company. Um, my thing is, what happens from when you're like a little boy running around a room rapping along to a kid writing his rhymes, like you talked about, sync the battleship. To okay, now we're going from that point to becoming a semi-pro on the scene. You know what I mean, like a professional amateur on the scene. I'm talking about before the label, before all of that stuff. Yeah. Tell me about that stretch. Well, I did a lot of rapping in the basement, mm -hmm. and I uh, I think it was like I had to get to a certain level before I would let anyone even hear my raps. Level you know of excellence and yeah, skills, like. And when I started realizing that some of the stuff that I was writing was maybe not as good, but almost as good as certain rappers, you know what I'm saying? Like, it gave me the hope that maybe I could do it. And when Compound Syllable came into, into play, mm -hmm. you know, and I started hearing you do it and G-Rap do it and Kane do it, I was just like, holy shit, they're not just rhyming the last word. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they're rhyming every syllable of that word. Like, mm -hmm. and then when I started doing that, I just, I, I was everywhere, man. I went to open mics. I, 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 you know, Proof took me to a lot of places, um, introduced me to a lot, of, a lot of things that he was doing because... Proof didn't have a job back then. Mm -hmm. He just rapped, and he mm -hmm. just went. You know, he went everywhere. He was. Uh, and how? Just, just let me. How did you meet Proof? Just how did you meet him? On the steps of Osborne High School, um, I was handing I was handing him a flyer to a show, to a talent show. Oh wow! And he was like, "You rap?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I rap." He's like, "Why don't you say something?" I'm like, "Okay." So I do a rhyme, and then I've told this story before, but. He rhymed birthday in first place. Birthday, first place, and I rhymed birthday, first place in the same rap. I said my rap, then he did his, and he rhymed the same. I was like, yo, I under <laughs> we understood <laughs> compound syllable rhyming. Yeah, so we're yeah. like, so ever since then, like, like it was a talent show that I was doing at, a, at another high school. I can't remember the name of the high school. And he showed up there. And I was like, holy shit, he showed up. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then we just hit it off from that day, man, and just ran everywhere together pretty much. But but Proof, like, towards our early 20s, Proof was in every spot there was, mm -hmm. you know. And I didn't really, I had a job, so I couldn't do everything that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So Proof kind of took off. He, he started, like, man, his buzz around the city was incredible. And one day he calls me. And I'm living upstairs in the attic of Kim's mom's house, right? Mm -hmm. Me and Kim are staying up there. It's not really a... It's an attic, but we turn it into a bedroom. And mm -hmm. things aren't looking so good. And I had stopped writing for a while. And I will never forget, he called me. He was like... I hadn't talked to him in like four months. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, I've been doing this and this and this. You need to come up to the hip-hop shop. And I'm like, okay. The hip-hop shop. Yeah. I love that. Which is was opened up by Maurice Malone, right? Okay, Paul. Yep. And, you know, Proof was doing a lot of things with Maurice Malone at, at that time. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yo, you need to come up here. Just rap if you don't like it. And for, just for, for our listeners who don't know who Maurice Malone is, could you just, just real quickly give him a little brief? Maurice Malone was a guy from Detroit who... Um, clothing designer. Clothing designer. Okay. From Detroit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And... He was doing pretty well for himself. Yeah, he had a line called. He did the jackets and all that, right? Yeah, with the jackets. Malone, yeah, yeah. Denim, Mo yeah, jeans, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Mo jeans. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Okay, so so he came. So keep he going. He told me. He told me come up to the shop. Now, mind you, I hadn't wrote a rap in a while. He was like, "Yo, come up to the shop on Saturday." I think it was. It was either the next day or like the uh, uh, whatever it was. I had a day to write the rhyme and try to memorize it. Mm -hmm. So. Basically, what he did when I got there, he was like, uh, 
he he had it, he he waited to the to the place cleared out because they had open mic every Saturday. Mm -hmm. I had never been to it, and he was like, "Yo, I'll just you know after everybody clears out, come up here at like six o'clock or whatever it was." And uh, I'm like, "All right, cool." So he had like. 15 people, there were like 15, 20 people there mm -hmm. instead of like 100, you know, 150. Mm -hmm. And I rapped, I got a reaction, and I was like, shit, I want to do this. You know, this I wanna, for real. I'm going to write a rap every week and come up here. And that's kind of that. what started happening. And then I threw my hat in the battle ring and started doing that and started winning. Mm -hmm. And won like the two battles there. And then it just. I think. You know, there's a the thing that we need to talk about, and there's an elephant in the room. I want you to tell me, yeah, everybody saw the movie. We all know that. Everybody, we loved the movie. It was a dope-ass movie, 8 Mile, of course. But my question is, I want you to really, like, what's it like? Because this is something I don't know. What's it like to be a white rapper in a predominantly black, African-American kind of Forget the record industry and all that and the radio shit. Like, fuck that. I'm talking about in that world, in Detroit, down there. Forget the movie. Like, what is it? What did you feel like? What was that like? You know what I mean? It was, um... I don't know. It was It was definitely... I had to... Especially coming up at that time, mm -hmm. when there weren't many white rappers at mm -hmm. all. You know, you had Third Base. And Beastie Boys, Beastie like, Boys was a yeah. different thing, kind of. And, uh, yeah, um, Tony D. I like Tony D a lot. Like, But but it just wasn't a lot of white rappers at the time. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was, uh, there was a, I don't, I don't know if I say stigma or whatever it was, but most, most people were not ready for the way that I rapped, I guess. Right. You know, so... Uh, I remember Proof used to take me up in the lunchroom at Osborne. Mm -hmm. And he would say, he would bet money and say, I got I got $10 on the white boy. Like, white man can't, white, yeah, white yeah, man yeah. can't jump. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. Sort of thing. I feel you. So, <laughs> you know, we did that and I would win and he'd get the money and then... I mean, I, <laughs> I'd get the... He was hustling with the Yeah, question. I would... I, I'd Paul get the credit. That's in the I background, the, everybody. I'd get the fame at the high school, you know, but, uh, yeah. Um, but it was, you know, it was definitely... It was a challenge. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy. It was definitely like the elephant in the room, but, like, me me and my friends, me, Proof, Deny, like, we never really... We saw color because we were aware of it. But it just didn't matter. It to wasn't us. part of it. It just I wasn't part of the. It just didn't matter. I know. To us, I know you what know? you mean. And well, look, I you, just to chime in there, I can relate to that because Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys played my tape for Rick Rubin and yeah. got me my break. So, you know, and I had to go see Rick and you know at his dorm in NYU and you know it's so funny when Rick walked downstairs I said I said oh shit you're Rick he said yeah I said I said I thought you were black he said cool let's go <laughs> that's actually that is that is so Rick yeah it's so Rick man like, cool <laughs> so um ladies and gentlemen it's LL Cool J Rock the Bells Radio DJ Z Trip Channel 43 you're listening to my man my, my guest Marshall Mathers Eminem in the building so yeah you're making all of these um you're making these inroads what happens then? Like, what what is the turning point when the fire... You're starting to win battles. The battles are getting bigger. We saw the film. Okay, what was the... What happened then? Like, what was the... You know, what was the launching pad that really said, it's time? Like, well, we had... After I started winning battles in Detroit, um, I felt like I should take it out of the city and try to do some... Uh, make a name elsewhere. So... Uh. I started getting in uh, competitions like Scribble Jam. Uh, me and Mr. Porter went to 97 Freak Nick mm -hmm. um, just to hand out tapes because Infinite didn't do well at all. <laughs> so my first album, Infinite, like we were just we had leftover cassettes, so we're like, fuck it, let's go to let's go to uh, Freak Nick and just hand them out. Mm -hmm. So we did that, then we went to How Can I Be Down, and then. Um, at some point, I can't exactly remember how this happened. I think I was like, I went to the Athene Athenium Hotel because Bazaar from D12 told mm -hmm. me about this chick named Wendy Day. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, you need to uh, give your tape to Wendy. Mm -hmm. Tape. Fucking tape. 
<laughs> yeah, tape. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You didn't email. You weren't shooting yeah, yeah. out an email. Right, yeah, it was right, a right. tape. Yeah. yeah. So, me and Bazaar and <laughs> Mr. Porter would wait outside of the hotel where Fat Joe was at. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love that. Yeah, like, and just you know, any any anywhere we thought rappers were, we brought a boombox with us. You sound like me. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me. Yeah. yeah. So we're sitting in the front of the hotel. I actually got a funny Fat, uh, fat Joe story. So we're sitting in front of the hotel, right? Mm -hmm. And me and me and Biz got the boombox, and we're playing our demos, right? Hoping that some a rapper's going to walk by and go, yo, what is that? I'm yeah. signing you. <laughs> so, I love it. So Fat Joe pulls up in a limo, and this is when the whole East Coast, West Coast, the thing had really started popping off, right? right. The shit was getting hot. Um, so we're sitting on the on the wall where the to right before the entrance of the hotel. See Fat Joe get out the limo. We're like, yo, shit, Fat Joe. Somebody yells, West Coast. <laughs> Fat Joe's like, Fat. Now mind you, this dude is as big as Fat Joe. And I'll bet you if he hears the story, he'll know what I'm talking about. Somebody gets, somebody says West Coast as he gets out the limo. He's like, East Coast, what? <laughs> they get up in each other's faces. Like, Fat Joe walked right up to the dude. They got in each other's faces. We thought, oh, shit. So, and Fat Joe was like, yeah, do something. Do something. And nothing happened. Dude didn't do anything. And he's like, yeah, that's what I thought. He's walking away. Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> so, me and Bazaar are like, this might not be a good time. <laughs> let's go over to, uh, let's see where KRS One's staying at. <laughs> yeah, you're killing me. Yeah, that's some funny. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is probably not the right time. Yeah. Joe doesn't seem to be, uh, yeah. He's, yeah. Gonna, he's not going to be in the mood to hear our demo right now. <laughs> Shout out to my man, Fat Joe. We love you, baby. Um,